This HD video projector might just change the way you watch movies and TV. Let's check it out. Dave Taylor here and I'm checking out this. This is the Miro Wi-Fi Mini HD projector and it's pretty sweet. As you can see, it is roughly the size of, I don't know, maybe a four pack of tall sodas like Red Bulls or something with a convenient carrying handle. Has the whole um, lens and everything on the front. It has speakers on the front and back so you get stereo. There is a focus wheel here, which is obviously very helpful. It automatic keystone, so if you project it at an angle and your um, image is like this, it'll automatically correct it to make it square. That's pretty darn important. On the back are a bunch of input ports. Here's a close-up. You have power, you have USB 3, HDMI, and you have AUX out and the reset button. And on the top is the power button, but good news is you don't really need most of those because it also comes with a remote control. Now, this remote control does not include batteries, so you'll need to get a couple of AAAs to put in here. But then this gives you all the functionality. You get to all the settings and preferences and everything really handy. So there's more to talk about. Here's the power adapters and stuff, but I know what you want. You want to see it in action. So let's go into a dark room together and have a look. You can see it has a crystal clear picture. I'm projecting it on a wall surface right next to the edge of a wall, which is why you see the reflection on the right. But it's right front and center is YouTube. There's access to all of the apps. If I wanna switch sources, I have my Mac hooked up. So if I go to HDMI, then this is the HDMI input. It takes a second to switch. And here's my Mac desktop nice and crystal clear. You can imagine if I had the projector further away, I could have an even larger image and anything I can show on my Mac should show up on the projector. Pretty handy. Now, let's go back with the remote. I'm just gonna do the back button. That gets me here. And I think one thing people are always interested in is the settings. So here are some of the different settings and here's that system update option and such but you'll wanna get all those fine-tuned for what you like. And we go back here and we go to all apps. Then you can see here are all your choices. You'll probably spend most of your time in Netflix or YouTube or Spotify, since those are your three primary choices that are built in. And let's go on to Netflix and see how it looks. So I can't show you things and I actually have disabled the automatic video preview but you can see this is eminently watchable. And if we wanna go and choose, oh, I don't know, let's try this. And let's actually watch it for a second, hopefully. Oh, well, it looks like I picked the wrong button. Let's go back here. And oh, I see what I did. Let's press play. And Netflix automatically picks the best resolution for your system. And let's maybe see if we can just jump forward a bit. But also here, let me get closer so you can hear the sound. I haven't let you hear the sound on this. And yes, that's at full volume. So that's about all the sound we're gonna do here because I definitely do not have the rights to the <laughs> Star Trek motion picture soundtrack. So I'll back up and back up and we'll leave Netflix. And that's my demo. There's lots to like here with this device and it's nice and bright and I'm not even in a completely dark room. So let me jump back on camera. Okay, there are some limitations with this, but honestly, having built in Netflix, YouTube, and Spotify is pretty good. And of course, being able to switch to anything on a USB, like a thumb drive full of movies, or be able to use HDMI and plug in, honestly, your computer for streaming. You could plug in a DVD player if you wanted to. Anything that outputs, obviously including gaming systems, you could use this as a projector for. Now, let me give you some specs. So, it is a full 1080p, so it's 1920 by 1080 in its projected image. 
It does have automatic keystone correction. They recommend that your optimal distance between the lens and your wall surface is somewhere from 100 to 200 inches because if you have it super close, it doesn't focus very well. And if you have it super far away, it is bright, but it ain't that bright. You're not going to be lighting up an auditorium with this device unless the auditorium is super dark. So <laughs> not intended for that purpose. That's good to know. I will say it is a 6,000 lumen. And lumen is the name of the game with video projectors because the bigger the number, the brighter the image, the less you have to worry about the room being super dark and the more it actually can work in different environments. This one's a champ. 6,000 lumens, not bad. And the bulb, because of their power management and cooling system, can run up to about 80,000 hours, they say. I obviously haven't tested that because if you divide that by 12, 12 hours a day, all right, 24 hours a day, divide that by 24, that's a while of testing. <laughs> now, it does have a built-in fan, and every so often that fan did kick in. Generally, I didn't find it was doing that while I was watching content, but if I turned it off, it would then do that to cool down the bulb, which I think is part of its management system, so you get maximum possible duration. Now, it identifies itself as an Android device, but it's not really running Android TV. So you don't get access to the Google Play Store or anything like that. You can't just install whatever you want. Maybe in a software update, they'll do that. And I should note that if you get one of these, you want to immediately do that wireless software update because there's a big and significant change that they released just a few weeks before I recorded this video made a big difference and it made a difference in what software was available so you'll want to do that now it also supports bluetooth 4.0 so you have the ability to do remote as a speaker or theoretically hook this up to a remote speaker if you want to do that inputs we already looked at hdmi um, usb 3 so you have your options there you can use dongles you could use something like vga i'm not sure why you would but you could it also has eight gig of built-in storage, so that's pretty nice. Now, a typical movie is somewhere between 800 meg and a gig, maybe 1.1 gig. So you could theoretically put like your kids half dozen favorite movies on this device and then it becomes self-contained. And while I have it flipped upside down, I should point out that there is a tripod mount and it can work like this or like this, or you can rear project. So if you have this and then a screen and then the audience, it can handle all three of those situations with just some simple settings. Pretty handy. Again, no batteries in the remote, probably not a crisis. And you can see the size here. It's about three pounds. It's really, again, it's probably about the same weight as a four pack of Red Bulls before you chug them. So really the only thing left to talk about is the price. But before we get to the price, I'm going to ask if you could subscribe to my channel. Please go ahead and click or tap on that little red button and boom, you're subscribed. Really appreciate that. The more subscribers I have, the more leverage I have to get gear and give you candid and honest responses and reviews because I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to show you the good and the bad. That's what I do. So go ahead, subscribe. Really appreciate that. Give me a thumbs up if you found this to be useful. If there's something you wish I would have demoed or shown or talked about, then leave that in a comment. Really appreciate that. Great. This is the Miro Wi-Fi Mini HD projector. It is $169.99, and there's currently a $20 off coupon. So it's $149.99 at Amazon.com. If you're watching this pretty speedily after I published it, I also have a discount code that's even bigger in the description of this video so you'll want to check that out that makes this a really good price and overall this is a really nice simple solution they could have added hdmi cables in the box they could have had a lens cover for transporting it or something but they also have done something really nice which is just make a simple straightforward device that you plug in and you go and it works and it's easy and it has nice sound and there's lots to like. So I'm gonna go back to my movie, which means I'll hope to catch you in my next video.